earnings today, both the fourth quarter last year and the whole year. Uh, and looking at those, first of all, you exceeded expectations pretty much across the board, it looked like. Congratulations on that. At the same time, it's a bit different because you were adding a substantial new component. And it looks like there's almost two aspects of NASDAQ. One is what you you're traditionally have done, uh, and the other is your solutions business. Explain how that works, because they seem to have very different growth patterns. Yeah, well, thank you. And we are really proud of the results we deliver for the shareholders. Just a quick recap. For the quarter, we had 7% overall growth. And in the solutions businesses, it was 9% growth. Or, and these are organic numbers. Um, and of course, then we also added a Denza into NASDAQ in the fourth quarter. The two key growth areas for us in the quarter were our index business up 26%, our anti-financial crime business up 25%. But over our, you know, overall, the, the overall business continues to really show the power that diversified um, portfolio that we talked about. Now, as you said, we have our markets business and we have our solutions businesses, and that includes like data analytics and software provide, um, products. Maybe take a second on that. So, you know, when we thought about how do we grow our business, we are a great, you know, market operator. We're really proud of that. Um, and what do markets do? They provide liquidity, transparency, and integrity. And when we think about how do we therefore partner more with our clients to help drive liquidity in the financial system? system, well, it's not just our own markets, but we provide technology to 130 other markets now. And now, with the acquisition of Adenza, we have our Calypso system, which provides risk management technology to banks. It gives them more ability to put more liquidity into the system. And if they manage risk better, they can put more liquidity into the markets. So that's the liquidity pillar. Let me just pursue yeah, sure. Adenza for a moment, because that is a big deal for you. Yes. It's very substantial. A lot of people, a lot of costs, a lot of revenue coming in. How is that integration going? Because as you know, most deals fail not because they're bad ideas, but because the integration doesn't get done. Well, so first of all, it's been a great start to uh, the, bringing Adenza into NASDAQ. We closed on the deal in November. Uh, we brought the team in right away. We created a new operating model where, where we have both Adenza and NASDAQ people leading the FinTech division. And the financial technology division within NASDAQ now is comprised of market technology, the technology we provide other markets, our anti-financial crime suite, which is in that integrity pillar, and then also includes the Adenza products, Calypso, risk management, and Axiom SL, which is reporting. So we now have a very complete suite of solutions we can offer banks, brokers, and, and exchanges around the world to help manage risk, manage their exposure to capital markets, um, and also root criminals out of the system. I would say that it's going really well, David, because when we, when we assess uh, acquisitions today, we really do do a deep dive on the culture. We think cultural alignment, values alignment is actually a critical component of success. Um, and so as we've been bringing new uh, companies and capabilities into NASDAQ, we make sure that we have cultural alignment, and that actually really speeds the integration along. And so we're off to a very, very strong start now with Adenza as part of NASDAQ. When you announced the deal, you emphasized the future growth opportunities and what this could mean for NASDAQ. You didn't talk much about cost synergies, which is unusual. Mainly acquirers talk about how much money they're going to save. Now you're doing the integration. Are you looking at substantial savings as well as the growth? So we are looking at both. Um, when we announced the deal, we announced $80 million of net, uh, net expense synergies and then over medium to long term, 50 to $100 million of revenue synergies from cross-selling and expanding the business. Um, so we do feel like we're on track uh, on both, both fronts. I would say that with the expense synergies, we have a very clear plan, a very cl clear path of execution. We expect to achieve that over the next two years. Um, and then we have an upcoming investor day, and we'll provide more details to our investors around that. But it is uh, off to exactly the start we wanted it to be, and we have a very clear understanding of where we're going with that. You mentioned financial crimes, and you have a report out for 2023 that certainly got most people's attentions, $3.1 trillion globally in financial crime. And you divvy it up among drugs and human trafficking. It was stunning to me yeah, how huge, large it is. Huge number. Uh, but how is, that, how is that business doing for you? And how much progress are you making with Verifin and the things you're doing in financial crime? Yeah, so our overall anti-financial crime business, which includes our surveillance business for brokers and the Verifin business, which is true, like fraud and AML detection, that, whole, that, that group grew uh, 17%. Verifin being the one that grew 25%. Um, and as you said, this anti-financial crime report really does expose how big is the problem. And the problem is $3.1 trillion in money laundering and another half a trillion dollars in fraud that's lost in the system. So, And banks can't solve this problem alone. So a, lot, a large part of the report is what is the collective action that has to happen between banks and among banks, not just one bank trying to solve it on their own, but how can you use technology and, and data consortia to root the problem out more 
effectively, and then also partnering with the public sector, you know, law enforcement. How do we make sure that the that the wheels are working as effectively as possible between the, the banks and the public sector? So the report is a big, broad report. Verifin does very specific work to help banks and complete workflows across AML and across fraud. And as I said, it's a big grower for us because the problem is so big. I think I have a sense of what NASDAQ is providing in terms of financial uh, crime. I, I think I, I understand something of what you're doing in terms of compliance. What about cyber attacks? Because we had another one just last week with Equiland. Is that something that you can help the banks with as well because they're struggling still? Well, I would say that's a big, broad uh, uh, challenge that every industry, every company has. And it's something that you have to stay extra vigilant on. We do a lot within our, our own business, of course, to protect our systems, to have, you know, we do, and we always say that this is not a problem for our, our IT security team to solve. This is a problem for every employee to solve. It has to be culture, people process systems across the whole company, protecting the NASDAQ, protecting our markets, protecting our systems. I think that in general, we do focus on that. Where we help um, with, actually within anti-financial crime, because some portion of fraud is through cyber attacks. And so we do help them try to, you know, they'll, the criminals will get in by hacking into an account, business email compromise and other things. We help the banks try to find that and make sure that the, that the victim is, is protected over time. But that's our role in that, in that area.